It is really hard to record this podcast as I'm trying to find the perfect words, but God knows I hate everything close to perfection. I guess I'm just scared of judgment, human beings and their consciousness sharing their perceptions with me, especially their potential harshest interpretations. We're not on the same frequency, we don't have the same way of thinking, let alone coping, loving or living. I am just being myself 100% in my channel with my gaming content and animatics and today in this recording I introduce you officially to my darker side. I claim my authenticity by accepting who I am in many multiple facets. The darkness I tend to hide in order to lure you in, to lure is a pejorative word, as if I was some kind of intense beast and you were my innocent prey. It's not that. I am not manipulative. Of course, as vulnerable human beings, we live, we smile, we try to make others happy. And once we realize that not everybody gives as much as we do, that's when we tend to stop caring about showing our own true darkest emotions, no matter how ugly or interesting they actually might be. I guess not everyone loves to waste their precious time in appreciating the brain and all its components. But as the being that I am, I can't help but want to go beyond my fear. I want to just let it go, talk about it, and I'm using this medium in order to do so, to give it momentum. I can't help wanting to express myself in any way that I can, because that's just what I am born to do. I want to give a voice to my scars, hoping that you will find peace and freedom within it. This video is very, very different from my other ones. The energy is not as lighthearted for the sole purpose of me being able to be as genuine as I can be with you in this exact moment. This is who I am, between four walls alone. This is very personal. I want you to take my hand. I want you and I to go back in time for a little while. Welcome to my Holy Diaries Chronicles. In 2020, I wrote two things in it that still mess with my head somehow, because I wrote only about experiencing two particular days and how they made me feel to my core. It was intense. The other days were just normal, filled with positivity, laughs, tears, gratitude, and boredom. In August 11th, 2020, I scribbled down this. Lately it's been hard to breathe. I can feel my lungs and esophagus being tamed by some pricking, bittersweet flames. I breathe this experience when I think too much, when I'm no longer distracted. Recently, Lucius have been my key's detainer, the one which divert from my mind's destructive trajectory. I love this screenshot so much. I don't even really know why. It made me feel like I needed to remember something. A beautiful memory that I haven't even lived yet. A smile meant to be grasped through an uncertain future's steam. Home. I felt a sudden warmth when I saw this shot while playing earlier. Because lately I haven't been myself but I'm okay with that. Still, I feel strange due to that night where I asked myself, why is it happening? Why are these individuals eating at my table? It's ours. My family. My blood. Do theirs taste like mine? 
I've been driving myself insane without knowing. I've been pondering about my existence through an unexplored energy. My organs are filled with burning anxiety since I've been seeing myself living as a corpse from the outside that night. Like a puppet just eating, watching every little details of dad's face while he was eating, sitting next to me. It just made me wonder even more, why am I even here experiencing this? I felt like a complete stranger to my own being. I wasn't just flesh and bones. I saw myself eating next to them that night. It was as if I was watching TV and hearing every decibels drown because it felt like I didn't even knew them anymore. I noticed physically tiny details on their face that I swear I never saw before. It was peculiar. <clears throat> Whether or not my mind's bombarded with loud thoughts about life and its components, I can help but ask myself at the end of the day, do I really know anyone? Who can I trust when all they do is destroying reality and create one which clashes with the other? What about mine? Everything will eventually decompose. I can only love blindly, and that's what I always do. I invest in some cheap trust for myself to love them with all my heart. Yet it felt like I never looked at them the way I did that night. My love was buried for some minutes. My feelings and myself detached. It was so strange. I felt empty. Now everything feels even more distorted for me since that innocent altar. My mind feels more disturbed because of my physical state which feels like I'm burning inside each second. But I don't want to waste my time being the pathetic creep that I feel like I am. Inflamed acid, destroy me, save me. I'm more than paranoid at this point and unbothered by my unhappiness which I neglect. My heart is heavy, thoughts blurry, yet I convince myself that I'm happy. But lately it's been hard to breathe. I'm losing my mind. Restricted flesh bite me. I'm the brain, the spine of a weirdo who was once mine. Why do I have to be like this? This is what dissociation feels like. And it was my first time. It was scary. I only dissociated twice in my life for the moment. And I don't know what precisely triggered it. My perception of reality was more f than it has ever been when I went through that. But what is dissociation really? What is it? I stumble upon this article of very well mine. Here is a more scientific approach to this occurrence. Dissociation is a disconnection between a person's sensory experience, thoughts, sense of self, or personal history. People may feel a sense of unreality and lose their connection to time, place, and identity. Dissociation disrupts four areas of personal functioning that usually operate together smoothly, automatically, and with few or no problems. Consciousness, identity, memory, self-awareness, and awareness of surroundings. Breaks in this system of automatic functions cause the systems of dissociation. Dissociation can range from a mild sense of detachment to a more severe disconnection from reality. For more information, the link will be in my description down below. Apparently, the cause of this is due to trauma, drug use or mental conditions. As far as I remember pretty well during this time, I was not on drugs. I also don't have any clinical nor mental conditions. Now I just want to know what triggered this incident to happen. What is the so-called dumb dumb trauma that I wanted to drown and suffocate so badly somehow? That I actually did by forgetting most of it and dissociating? Because yes, like everyone, I've endured pain. 
I used to feel shattered sometimes. I've begged to feel numb before. There are things I wished I could just forget, and I guess I succeeded in doing so. It's just scary, though. But let's leave this in the past, because nothing of it was really able to kill me anyways. When I've written this, I wasn't feeling totally like myself. It felt like an altered version of me. Now this podcast has an essence. I wanted it to be a reflection of my introspective state, a glimpse of hope in the never of whoever you are listening to, this and I. This is for my lovely freaks, the creeps, the black sheeps, for the ones who don't feel understood. I love you. No matter how pathetic you might feel, make that your strength. It's definitely mine to be the freaky black sheep. I also talk about happiness here. It feels like I wanted someone to save me. The truth is, the only one who can is me. It's myself. Same for you because no one really knows what you went through. About the neglecting my own unhappiness part, I feel it's important to point out that I know that I am the one in charge of it. I have control over it, and you do too. If you really want to smile, you can. It's your duty. Sometimes it feels like everything might be better with someone by your side, because if you're like me, You need a deeper purpose than the normal average one. Mm, Normal average being maybe to just build your life without the interference of mental health problems and vulnerability being more on the shallow spectrum of things in life. For you and I, it might just probably mean to find the value in our purpose, or like I call it, home. To learn to love, to fall in love with your significant other each year a little bit more. Home can have a heartbeat, right? But I don't think it's the answer to your happiness. You are everything that you have ever searched for. If you are looking for love, it's you. You are love. Now some people can just be pricks, horrible. They might bring you down, dim your light because you have what they lack. Stay as you are. Don't let anyone make you feel salty if you're sweet. You know what I mean? It's fucking boring to be like everyone else. It's fucking shallow to pretend to be edgy. No matter the scars you have, physical or mental, both, you're strong. If you are here still listening to this, you are mighty. You are a black sheep, baby, and that's fresh. (laughs) Now, if someone older, if someone wise is hearing me talk right now, They might just think I'm insane to think that I think I might have everything I have ever wanted. That being selective over what I value might be wrong. Because life has a lot of complexities within it that might imply complications into the fulfillment of my dreams. And sometimes you might want to drop your ethics maybe. I get that. I get that. There might be a lot of wrong in what I'm saying. Heck, I'm just a stupid little alien woman. (laughs) I never said I was wise. I'm no teacher, no preacher, especially when I wrote things like this text about my emotional state in 2020. Sometimes I wonder why I have to be like this. Why can I just be the one who gets comfortable around the superficial people? Why do I have to focus on my mental health so badly 
and those of others? Why does it feel like I need to protect myself more than ever now? Sometimes it just... Sometimes it just feels like you and I have to invest in some trust to love. Sometimes we just do. I just wish I was skin deep, not having to want someone to clutch my waist and give me a love bite till his canine might be hitting my trippy bones or something. To feel deeper than others must not be a curse. It's a blessing. No matter how lost I might have felt at that moment while writing this, there was beauty in it. About that feeling of maybe knowing what my home feels like. At the flash of a moment, I saw a glimpse of a lovely prospection appearing while playing. It was in the scenery, a memory yet to be lived, just waiting for me. It's a kind of souvenir which doesn't really exist in the now or in the past. And once many years from now, I might have a deja vu impression about it. And call me crazy. But I might remember it or not and be like, I knew I was meant to live this. <laughs> so even after an hour of alteration to my being, I was lost, yes, but I saw the light and the opportunity in feeling something independent from whatever I'm used to feel most of the times. It's okay to be the black sheep. It's okay to feel intense responses and sensations from the very core of your own being. The only thing you gotta do is to tame the demons trying to pull you down. And it's difficult, it's hard. So, I'll give you one of my favorite quotes from a podcast I listen to, which I don't really remember. I've only written it, the quote in my notebook. It's from Gary V. I've watched his podcast. I got, I think I watched three of his podcasts in the past, but I don't even remember them. I just remember this quote because. I've scribbled it down to remember it because I loved it. Enjoy eating shit and dirt and bleeding and the grind and don't give a f about what anybody else thinks. Don't beat yourself up. Don't hold yourself accountable for arbitrary bullshit fantasies. Just put in work and enjoy that. This thing is just like the punch you need, the tough love. If you're a guy, it will drag you from your snowballs down to earth. <laughs> If you're a girl, it will grab you by your ponytail, taking your head out of the water. You don't need to bleed each time, but whenever it happens, try to enjoy it. There's nothing better to do. Now in the 25th of September 2020, I saved a video of Casper, the friendly ghost, attached it to my text about my emotional state of that date. I'll play it right now. I have a CD full of Casper stories coming straight from my trip to Thailand as a kid. I just remember watching it until it glitched. <laughs> know that I felt like my own shadow at that time 
and this resonated with the situation and this text. Hi Def, I feel like my own shadow, like a memory yearning to exist, a legacy to be remembered, stuck in space and time, so versatile yet synergy is being condensed to my f up pulse. I feel like my own shadow is on a hunt, like Caligula's let them hate me as long as they fear me. I don't care what other consciousness bring to the table as long as I am. Me. They love me, but who am I? I always say to myself each passing day, a fragment of my own vitality passes away, an atom of my perception fades, continually being replaced over and over again, evolving and decaying. So hi Duff. Mind vs heart, lately my fire has been fueled as intensely as usual. I am passionate about whatever everything means to me. I take actions, follow my heart as long as I don't expect another human being being involved in my expectations. But my mind has changed, no matter how significant my growth may be to my core, and I know it might sound scary or damaged, but my psyche feels numb. My labyrinthine intellect slowly disappears, making life adorable. I'm f***ing with that pitch black. I'm f***ing with you, Duff. It tells me that I can't wait to die. Pretty shocking, huh? I guess. I don't want anybody who cares about me, who loves me, to see that let alone even hear about it. This was in the past, because I don't want to disappoint you. I don't think that it comes from clinical depression. I am not suicidal, because I was fine. And a few days after writing this, I was not drowning like I used to in my teenage years, you know. When you're young, everything feels new. Everything feels worse too. Because you don't really know what are your best ways to cope with heartbreak or feeling completely broken for whatever reason. So if you have suicidal tendencies, don't give up ever. You are being a coward. Do you really want to leave the ones who love you behind? Even though it might feel like no one loves you, if you actually cares, trust me. They are just bad at showing it. This is why you might feel like you're being left alone in your mess. Everyone has a degree and extent to how they are able to display their affection. Not everybody is the same. It might get confusing. Keep the one close to your heart closer. Just do that. When I wrote this, I wasn't in the state of mind of Hey, I'm so gonna kill myself tomorrow and have this toaster as a bath bomb or something. Heck yeah! No, <laughs> I wasn't in that state. A lot of people want you to stay alive. I am grateful to be alive, and you should too. Now, everything that I've written should be taken with a grain of salt, as my mind was playing tricks with me at that time. As if it was someone else's sometimes. But it's just me, and I'm f***ed up. <laughs> I'm a freak. No wonder I'm alone most of the times. Sometimes I feel like I'm harder to love, or maybe no one really tried as much, because everyone is a tiny little bit selfish at the end of the day, and you should be too. And sometimes the people who can't love you are simply not able to love themselves. Strive for your own happiness. Have your own back. Love yourself. You can't love someone else without really loving yourself first. Otherwise, I feel it might become toxic, right? See, for instance, I feel like I still have a lot of work to do within myself. I have my own demons to fight. I respectfully admire those who are able to tackle them easier than me. 
that doesn't mean I'm not able to love. I am able to love harder than any of you. <laughs> so it just means in order to be with my other half someday, I would love to be the best version that I can be to build and amplify the purest form of respect and love for him while having a lot for myself too on the side. According to Greek mythology, humans were originally created with four arms, four legs and a head with two faces. Fearing their power, Zeus split them into two separate beings, condemning them to spend their lives in search of their other halves. Of course, nowadays, there's a lot of shitty people out there, so it's hard to believe in what we project, because we are bad at judging people, because we got hurt the most. That's why we have trust issues. Heck, maybe someday in the future, you'll find yourself in a cabin in the woods alone, far from civilization, with some doggies, or cats, or both, and you might become the crazy cat lady protecting yourself from douchebags. Having some wine and using your electrical toothbrush for multiple purposes each night while crying and each time and each time a man tries to touch the region where you pee in, in the first date night, he'll get heavy cat scratches all over his face after leaving your place because you would have thrown your cats on him for protection measures. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's scary to think about. But with or without someone, a cabin in the woods is perfect, to be honest. Nonetheless, just breathe, forgive, but don't forget, and good luck to find your other half. I love to think that Plato's theory was true, even though it might be just some type of myth. I'm a hopeless romantic, cut me some slack, jeez. <laughs> There's a lot of self-love and care that might be necessary in order for you to love someone to your full potential. I've erased myself so much from the life of others that especially in 2020, I felt the most loneliest year of my life. It was a choice. And then we got the pandemic. It helped in cutting ties and being more in introspection. To question everything sometimes by yourself, it might not get you wiser. Let me tell you that. You might feel more lost if you're looking in the wrong places, the wrong distractions. Some say that you can't heal in the same environment where you got sick. And I think it might be true. Because I was alone with my thoughts nearly 24-7. And the consequence was that I thought I was completely okay with the idea of death embracing me sooner than ever during a rough day. But I need to heal the environment in where my brain works. You need to take care of your mind. You need to care about yourself. So somehow, this quote doesn't really mean anything. You should heal in the same environment where you got sick. Because you got sick at first because it was all in your mind. Right? Truth is, right now when I'll post this podcast on YouTube, I'm still okay with the idea of dying because it's life. Memento mori. But I don't want to die tomorrow or soon. I want to see what I'll be able to achieve or not. Now if I die, oh well, it's not my fault. I don't like to communicate about politics and religions because it might just bring conflict sometimes. So here I've written the experience 
of a kiss of death as for a result being the complete pitch black because according to a biological definition let's say death is the irreversible loss of functioning of the organism as a whole okay I didn't include religion here or the afterlife because I guess I wanted an external sleep, a way to escape everything. And I didn't want to believe in nothing. I wanted I wanted only non existence to cease to exist, to cease the pain. But to cease everything is also to give up on the people you love. On the memories, on the good days, the bad days, on the smiles, the laughs, on your achievements. Again, I'm not suicidal. I was talking to death as if I couldn't wait to meet it. It might seem atrocious to some. And sometimes, if I read this back, I'm still in awe. Because why would... Why would I want this? Why would you want this? If you have a similar train of thought as I do. I doubt that. I hope not. But it's okay. But it's okay. It feels heavy looking back at it. But again, there's always light peeking through even in the pitch black. I guess. If you have a consciousness, you can flip your whole world around. A little sprinkle of imagination, love and passion. Your mind is powerful. Disney said, one of my favorite persons on earth. <laughs> if you can dream it, you can do it. It's one of my favorite quotes of his. I do believe that this might help you in times of need. Whenever it feels like your world is crashing, you can reinvent it with faith, love, compassion for yourself, with ambition and purpose. So if you can dream it, you can do it, honey. I feel like by talking to you, I'm talking to myself in the future too. This podcast is for me to know also that I proclaim my weakness, I dominate it. I claim myself as a freak, the black sheep, and I'm proud of being here with my scars and what not self-perceived wannabe shenanigans. I want to be able to be alive and listen to this in some years. To know right now, at this very instant, where I come from and to appreciate that. And to appreciate it again later. To give it momentum. But I guess I wanted to make this podcast also to spread awareness about tiny little details. That can help you to move forward wherever you are at. You, the viewer, mentally speaking. I'm sure a lot of people will not see this or hear about this because I got no clout. Okay, I know it. But I hope the people who clicked on the thumbnail or whatever have been able to travel with me in time and space. To be in my mind for a minute. To be in an environment of full understanding. A loving environment. Talking about everything and anything doesn't really matter. We're not judging here. I've always tried to find answers in books, articles, in religion about what everything that life might represent. I guess I will never truly know. We will never truly know until we die, right? For years I've researched and found only more questions rather than answers. And it kind of annoyed me. But recently I've been like interested in the astronaut's way of life. Space, getting to know more about our universe. 
watched some videos of Carl Sagan talking about the fourth dimension in science. I've seen a video of an astrophysicist, Jan Levin, interviewing Matthew Kleben about the theory of gravity. And I wrote in my little notebook something that he said, which made me smile. The fact that there are all these fundamental issues that we really don't understand. But on the other hand, there's all these moving parts that fit together so neatly. There's definitely something that's working here. But ultimately, what is going to emerge from that? What structure is lying under it? We just don't know. But I think the fact that there are so many fundamental questions that we just don't know the answer to, that's an opportunity, that's exciting, that's great. I'll put the links to the video in the description box below if you are interested. But what he said made me feel better. I was like, okay, I have all these questions which gave life to more queries, but hey, this man's enthusiasm towards the opportunities they arouse is remarkable. I love it. I'm curious too. I'm eager to learn more about life. There's so much to discover that we don't even have a chance to find them all. Life is beautiful. It's a gift, believe it or not. Knowing every answers to your questions would have been boring. So, so boring. The mystery of it all is what makes it thrilling. There's so much possibilities to achieve your purpose. May it be a home that has a heartbeat or just security. I will go now, but I wanted to add that between the mind vs the heart, follow your heart. If you choose your mind like I did in 2020, you might start to lose both your mind and your heart. Keep your heart close to you. It might feel like you're tired of it sometimes, that you won't mind of it to stop breathing, but it's everything that you got to make a huge difference and impact my little black sheep. <laughs> Keep it pure. Stay beautiful. Stay true to yourself, stay clean, respect yourself, love yourself before anyone else and stay humble. I think I'm just going to end this podcast with a little quote again. As the wise genius that Patrick Starr from Spongebob is, that pink guru stated his uncle Cletus quote let not your heart walk away from you lest your mind grow legs and follow it be love peace see you later alligator